common way that we'll prepare instruments for the autoclave is to put them in a pouch. These sterilization pouches um, are already ready to go with an indicator on the package itself. So we do not need to put an indicator inside them. What will happen is these arrows on the outside of the sterilization pouch will change color when they've been sterilized properly. Is when we're putting in instruments, one of the key things is, is that when we actually open them, they're opened in this direction. So, when we place an instrument inside, we want to put it handle down first. Okay? This instrument stays open by itself, so we don't need to worry about having any cotton in there. If we were placing an instrument in here with hinges, we would place cotton within the hinges. The next thing we're going to do is just pull off that um, cover on the tape and then fold it over. One of the things with these pouches is that they must be folded exactly on this line. That means that it's been properly sealed. Now, when we're going to load our autoclave, now that we have all of our tools ready, we'll probably have a variety of tools. Things that are wrapped, things in pouches, and items that don't need to be um, wrapped or put into a pouch. Some objects are used for non-sterile procedures but need to be very well cleaned. So they will be sanitized and dried and then they'll be put in the autoclave to be fully cleaned. Um, and then we will store them in a clean drawer until they're used. A lot of autoclaves are very different. So um, whenever you get working in an office, you'll want to get out the autoclave manual and get familiar with the autoclave that you have. So the process of autoclaving is based on steam being pressurized and superheated above boiling temperature. So we want to make sure that there's plenty of water inside the autoclave. We can't just use any water though, we need to make sure that we use distilled water. Because tap water can have other minerals or other material in it, so it may not um, work well and it may harm the autoclave. So each time we go to, to um, use an autoclave, we want to check the water level and make sure that there's plenty of water in there. Once we know that there's enough water, we're going to load our autoclave. Just like the idea, when we were wrapping our instruments, we want to make sure that all surfaces are going to be um, heated by the steam inside the autoclave. So they, all surfaces have to be touched by that steam. So they all have to be evenly distributed in the autoclave. Some autoclaves will merely have an imp a chamber that you must fill. And so in that regard, you would want to try to stack your items in there, have enough items, that then everything would be um, arranged in a fashion that the steam could flow up through and around all of your packages. Other autoclaves offer trays to be able to make sure that there's even airflow between all of your packages. So we would want to make sure that we organize our items on, in our trays so that we can feel like, okay, this is going to allow for enough air to move around. I might be able to get a few more instruments in here, but this is actually a pretty small autoclave, so we don't want to push it too much. We're also going to include our indicator because we are including items that are not wrapped. So we want to make sure that as we're putting it in, we're including the indicator for that instrument. So now we'll want to secure the door. Each system is going to be different. In this case, we have a crank to make sure that the door is secured and tight. Other autoclaves have a gasket system and a latch. In this type of system, we want to make sure that this is really nice and tight because we don't want this to um, open up and we need it to reach a certain amount of pressure so that chamber has to be sealed. Before we turn it on we're going to get everything set. One of the issues is time. For general packs uh, and wrapped items that need to be sterile for surgical procedures we want to make sure that they've at least been sterilized for 30 minutes. So we could turn our dial to 30 minutes. 
We also want to make sure that they at least get to 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 121 degrees Celsius. The manufacturer will give recommendations for different types of um, wrapped items. And then we will turn on the um, we'll turn the dial to sterilize and then turn on the autoclave. When the autoclave is done, we will and after it's depressurized fully, then we can open up the autoclave. And each autoclave will have its own system for how it allows you to know that the autoclave is ready and done to be opened. All the items should be dry um, when we pull them out. So we will undo the door. And when we remove them, some offices have different procedures for putting the items away. Our office has us wear gloves when we handle things that have been sterilized and put away. This is especially important if you have any um, breaks or sores on your skin or any dry skin. A lot of procedures have to be done with gloves on to make sure that we're protecting our patients. When we remove it, it should be cool to the touch. Sometimes after it's done, this can be quite hot and needs time to cool. But if it's ready to go, we can pull it out. And the next thing we do before we put it away is we want to make sure that everything was done properly. So we'll be looking to see that the arrows had changed color and had been properly autoclaved before we put it away. Our tape will have changed color on our wrapped items. Our indicator will also have changed color to allow us to know that it's been fully um, sterilized. And then we know that all these items have been sterilized properly and now we can put them away in the clean drawers where they're kept until they're used for a procedure.